Okay, so this video is going to cover um, the, the continual effort that we have for multi-pass rendering inside of 3D Studio Max. Again, this is something that we're working on a Revit file, this little warehouse set piece that we built in Revit linked to 3D Studio Max. And now we're using some of 3D Studio Max's advanced rendering capabilities to get us some effects that we just can't get inside of Revit. Um, you know, the idea of moving towards more of a film quality rendering or uh, something that we can at the very least take control of the rendering style and move past the idea of photorealism. So what we're going to do uh, in this um, particular tutorial set is look at three different types of rendering passes and how we can combine them together. And those are ambient occlusion, an edge pass, and a specular pass. Um, there are far more that we can do, um, but we're not going to cover all of them in the video, but this will give you an idea of what you can start working with in terms of multi-pass rendering. So right now, um, what I've got is um, a camera looking up the stairwell in the set piece here. Um, if I render this out very quickly, you'll get an idea of what our image looks like uh, as a base and we'll start creating some passes to modify this base rendering. Again, I'm keeping the rendering resolution really low on these tutorials, so what we'll see in Photoshop when we bounce things into that program are going to be pretty low quality, but the core idea um, will remain intact. Um, I'm assuming that you guys probably don't really want to watch uh, a 30 minute rendering happen in a tutorial. So with that said, let's start with an ambient occlusion pass. So what we're going to do to make that happen is actually overwrite all of our materials in the scene with an ambient occlusion material. So I'm going to start with an arc and design material. And I'm going to double click on that and name that material ambient occlusion. I'm going to set the base as a mat and I'm going to overwrite the diffuse channel on my ambient occlusion material with the mental ray ambient occlusion material. I'm going to drag that node to my diffuse channel and then I'm going to overwrite all the materials in the scene by going to rendering, render setup, processing, and then I'm going to turn on Material Override. And so I'm going to take the output node on my ambient occlusion pass and place it in the material slot, just like that. So now when I click Render, what I get is a gradient image that in particular is rendering out the luminance um, of objects. Not sure luminance is probably the exact right term that I should be using for that, but it's sort of that quality, the illuminated quality. Now, if you notice, there's one major problem that I have with this, is that, and that is I actually overwrote the glass material as well. And so that's not going to give me sort of an authentic reading. So right now, I haven't found a way to um, not overwrite the glass material. I'm hoping somebody out there is watching this and can help me out with that. But what I have resolved in terms of being able to do with this is simply hiding that object from the rendering. So I'm going to do select by name. I'm going to select my glass. I'm going to right click on the glass to get my object properties. And I'm simply going to make the glass not renderable. Re-render this one more time with ambient occlusion, uh, except re-render it one more time with the correct viewport. And yeah, you can definitely see a different kind of rendering when that glass is not overwritten by the ambient occlusion material. So that's definitely the quality of image that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image out as my AMB pass. And I'm just going to stick with the JPEG format for right now. Okay, so the next pass that I want to do is an edge pass. And again, I'm going to use a material override to do that as well. Uh, this time, the material override that I'm going to use is called ink and paint. And this is the cell shader uh, material that's written in as part of Max. And if you notice, it's not underneath the, the mental ray materials. It's a standard material. Um, so it's really designed to use with ray tracing. But we can kind of manipulate it to get it to work uh, with mental ray as well. So I'm going to double click on this material. I'm going to call it the edge pass. 
and I'm going to change my color to white because I don't want it to actually render out anything other than an edge. So I'm going to set the uh, materials on all my surfaces to white. And let's take a look at one additional thing. I'm going to open a preview window. Let's make this a little bit larger. If I manipulate my level settings, you'll actually see um, the paint levels are setting the interior gradients um, for the object surface. So you can get some nice effects with that, but if I only want to render edges, I need to set my paint levels down to one. Uh, you can kind of think of that as posterize, the posterize uh, settings inside of Photoshop. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I am uh, rendering my edges with an ink edge and I want to get some line weight quality. So I'm going to set my minimum edge to 0.5, my maximum edge to 4, and then I'm going to pull up my material override again, and I'm going to overwrite the ambient occlusion this time with edge pass. So if I click render now, hopefully I'm rendering the right window. Yeah, I believe I did. Okay, you'll notice that I get something that's very, very wrong. Um, what I'm seeing is um, the result of using mental ray and edge rendering. And the solution to getting the render that we want is pretty simple. I'm just going to go to exposure control and turn off the mental ray photographic exposure control. I'm just going to set that to no exposure control. And I'm going to re-render. And this time we actually should have the line work from the rendering. So I'm going to save that as my edge pass in the JPEG format. So immediately, that's the only one that I don't want to use mental ray uh, um, exposure, that I want to turn exposure control off. So I'm going to go back to um, the automatic exposure control or the mental ray photographic exposure control. And again, under my exposure settings, I'm using physically based indoor daylight. So the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add a specular highlight pass to my last rendering. And that's under render elements. I'm going to click add. So if you've watched the tutorial on depth of field, you'll remember that we use the same technique to add a Z depth pass. This time we're going to add a specular pass. So I'm going to say, okay. And when I render this, we're actually going to see two different renderings. We're going to see the base rendering. Oh, you know, I did one more thing that I completely forgot. I need to go back and turn off my material override. So that was under processing. So I'm going to disable the material override. And let's try rendering that one more time. Uh, well done moment there for me. So there's our interior rendering. And as soon as that completes, I should have a second window that pops up. And it's going to be rendering out the specular highlights. In particular, it's going to be looking at the specular highlights on objects that have a certain glossiness, which in this particular case is going to be the handrail objects, uh, which I have set to sort of a chrome material right now. And so you're going to see um, those highlights, even some of the ones back in here. And if I was rendering at a higher resolution, you would even see a few more specular highlights back off in the distance. And, you know, the one thing that I would add to this system is, you know, I should really go in and refine that material and give it a little bit of a noise so that these edges aren't quite as consistent. They would look a little bit more realistic if they were broken up with a little bit of a noise pattern. We'll do a tutorial on that one later. But for right now, let's just go ahead and save this image out as my specular pass. And we'll save this out as the base. So if we drop into Photoshop now, I'm going to open up those four files. And I'm going to start with my base image. Um, first, let's add the ambient occlusion pass. So I'm going to go select all, edit, copy, edit, paste. So with this layer on top, I'm going to go ahead and set my pass type to multiply. Now what you can see is it's a little bit too drastic right now. Let's zoom in one time on this. 
But what I can do with that ambient occlusion pass is set my opacity and turn it down a little bit. And what this is giving you control over is sort of the lighting contrast in the scene, which is something that you don't get post without doing this ambient occlusion pass, where we can really sort of play up the, the drama in terms of the contrast in a more refined way than simply using brightness contrast settings inside of Photoshop with a base image. So the next thing we're going to add is the edge pass. Select all, edit, copy, edit, paste. Again, I'm going to set this to multiply. And now you can actually start to see the edges defined in terms of the overall rendering. And what that allows me to do, again, is see both surface and edge as a definition inside of my rendering, uh, which can be really nice. You know, uh, a lot of times in architectural drawings, we're, we're as interested in the edge quality as we are the surface quality in terms of creating a rendering. I can also start to work that edge pass drawing. Uh, I could run filters on it. Uh, make it look a little bit, bit sketchier. I can continue to, to refine the edge quality renderings inside of 3D Studio Max to get some different effects as well. So the last piece that I'm going to add in is my specular pass. Select all, edit, copy, edit, paste. And I'm going to set this pass to screen. So again, what this allows me to see is uh, a little bit more intensity in terms of what the uh, brightness coming off of surfaces does to an object. I can also take this pass, and if I want sort of a bloom effect coming off of a material, sort of that uh, intensity, how the intensity of light coming off of an object affects a lens, by coming in and running a slight blur. Let's go to blur and Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to set up a slight blur and you can see how that the intensity of that blur kind of creates a halo effect around objects. Uh, it's subtle but it adds sort of that level of believability in terms of that's actually a photograph. Or uh, it also allows me to perhaps highlight a material or create a different style to a rendering that I can't get without doing multi-pass rendering.